because I did most of Saga stuff before I even did that. So yeah, it's it's interesting because I'm I'm a few chapters in on Alan's side, and then I switched back to Saga to to push that storyline a little bit long or further now, and I'm just very I I like can't say much, but I'm I'm just very intrigued by what could potentially be going on right now. Uh, and I just, I, I just need more answers. I like, I like the gameplay loop of Saga's side more where like, but like Alan's side's fine, but, uh, Saga's side, especially where you are right now, Brennan is just like very like Resident Evil one, two style. Like it just feels like I'm playing like an old school Resident Evil game updated and everything. And just yeah, the vibe it, of it. It, and everything. it definitely has that like a little more, like it's, like similar puzzle structure to like old Resident mm-hmm. Evil and stuff. Yeah, I could definitely, I can definitely feel that. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm enjoying it. I I played two chapters of Saga last night, late at night, which was a fucking mistake because it was like it kept catching me off guard with the jump scares. Like I was, I was not ready for certain stuff. Um, so you're almost where I am, Dom. I I've finished the part that you're on, and I did the chapter after that. So I'm I'm right after that at this point uh mike you gotta you gotta hop on there you gotta get some yeah some alan wake in your life did you finish that section that you were working on uh no because i i figured out where i was supposed to go and then i died and i said i'll come back to it at that point i had found i had died like right after i found a save point so i wasn't too broken up about it Mm -hmm. it's like oh Figuring out where you get to need to go in that game gets a lot more complicated later in that game, I will say, too. It's, like, my only gripe with the game. But, like, it's like it's there for you. You can figure it out. But there's yeah. some parts where I'm just well, like, where the Here's the I thing go? that got me concerned. Because with control, I could open up the map, I think, fairly freely and just have fun with it. And, and just you kind of care about this, too. Well, besides the fact that I don't actually have a button on my controller for the map, I have to press M on my keyboard... Um, the other thing was early on in the game, it was like, Hey, listen, you can go into the, uh, what's Saga's thing called the mind place. Alan has a writer's mind room, place. but the mind place. Yeah. Mind place. So, like, you can do this whenever, but it doesn't pause the game. So like, if you're in the middle of action, you're going to get hurt. So in my mind, oh, I, yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, I, I forgot about that too. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I can't just look at the map when I'm not quite sure of my surroundings. You know what I mean? I'm so just then a I'm baby just, and I I'm need that lost. button that you can press that's like in dead space that like gives you a line of where you need to go and I'm good. You know, it's like everyone complains about like the yellow paint and they're like, when did games get easy for everyone? I'm like, don't stop oh, doing no, that, I, please. I, I like yeah, it. I, mean, that, <laughs> oh, I don't really think I find myself getting lost in this game that often. It's it's like it has the coffee to world. Explore, the coffee world but... got me. Coffee world. I, I was getting a little lost because uh, just trying to, like, I don't know. It's like it tells you what to do, but it doesn't, like, I don't know. Like, Bro, there are, know. there are, the environmental storytelling is very sign pointy. And literally in Coffee World, it's like no, the arrow signs pointing, like, pointing, yeah. pointing to where the places you need to go are. Like, you need to go on the Espresso Express. Uh, there's the fucking sign that's pointing in that direction. Oh, by the way, when you were doing that, did you have a glitch with, like, there's, like, one part where it's a ride that needs to, like, spin around or anything? And you couldn't get the thing you needed? No, like in my game, I, I, I apparently it was just a glitch in the game, but the ride itself was disconnected and like pieces of it were into the ground and everything. And I'm like, how oh, the weird. fuck do I get? And, and then I looked it up and it's like, yeah, that's a glitch. And I just like exited out and came back in. It was perfectly fine. Weird. But I thought I was going to have to start over at that point. And uh, I, I did actually have a weird visual glitch in Coffee World, but it didn't it didn't like hinder anything. It was just like a weird yeah. visual glitch, but it wasn't part it of was that. It was an easy fix, but yeah. Um. But yeah, Alan Wake 2 continues to still be good. I, I did say to Todd on the phone earlier, though, it, it hasn't changed my opinion of the game, but I do think the more I'm playing, I think uh, like I'm playing this game for the story and like some of the visual stuff that the game plays around with. I, I think it has a really interesting story. Uh, but I will say, I think that at points, the gameplay loop is a little not bad. I just think... It's not doing anything special in certain parts. Uh, I don't know. The more I think about the game and the more I'm, I mean, I'm almost like 10 hours in at this point. Uh, it's not bad. and I'm still enjoying my time aside from the times that I get scared. I just think that it's a little, you know, some of the puzzles I think are very like read this note 
put in this code or go do this thing. And it's like very, there's no puzzle there. It's just kind of like read this thing and now you know what to do. Um, could, could be a little more. I mean, it might, it might get more complex as the game goes on, which it definitely has in certain areas. But um, I don't know. It's still a fantastic game. You're looking for a game that's like stick these things all together and you can just cross it. Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> no, I'm just I it's more so like I I think this game does some really interesting things with how it presents itself and I think that it has a very well-written story uh and I think those are like the highlights of it. Like I like I wouldn't I don't know. Like it's it's up there with gameplay wise of like a Resident Evil type game where it's, you know, it's a little stiff maybe on purpose. It's a little not janky. I don't think the game's janky. I it's just like it's it's a little bit rigid at Tank, It's tanky can tank control. Kinda, kinda, yeah. yeah. At least the combat. Yeah. But I think it's meant that way because it's supposed to fit that tone of like, you know, it's not like a you're not an action hero, like you are you know what I mean? Like you're just you're dealing with paranormal one's a, nonsense. Yeah. yeah. One's an author. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it, listen, hate- in Alan Wake 1, he definitely did some things a, that were maybe a little Swartz superhero. Thing. Yeah, that was like, what the fuck is going on in this game? It's killing like 100 people at once. Uh, but I, I still don't love like puzzles it. and games. Most people love puzzles. I'm not a fan of like puzzles and games, so like I'm glad it's like I don't have to fucking overuse my brain. It, it depends. It, the right games, it, it, if it fits with the game and it's good design, I'm on board. If it's like yeah. misplaced or it's there and it's not good. That's when it's going to, and I don't think the puzzles are bad. I just think that a lot of yeah. them are just like, Hey, I found this chest. How do I open it? Oh, the note on top tells me to look at this and I do. And it's like, okay, that's how you open it. Have you done, have you done like the doll, like the doll puzzles at all? All the ones I've found I've solved. Yeah. If you found like, where do you think? Like, I, like, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's a spoiler, but like, I can't find half of the dolls I need for those fucking puzzles, so I just uh, like I'm not doing this. Of all the ones that I've come across, the dolls are, they are usually in that area. Yeah, I haven't, are, I haven't okay. like had to search I didn't far. Going too hard I mean, into it. Okay. you, you, when you do those puzzles, though, you do have to pick the dolls back up. If you don't take them with you, you don't have them anymore. Oh, okay, got, and you got to reuse them for other things. Okay, yes, that's good yeah. to know. So if you if you have left any of the puzzle, then you need to go back to that puzzle and find them. Uh, Unless the game puts which them somewhere I, else, which, for you, I, which I, I don't know if they yeah. do. Well, I, I didn't know that. And the first one of those puzzles I did, as you're walking away, Saga is like, oh, I should, shouldn't should forget those dolls. I might need them later. So, and she, I think she does say it every time you walk away, if you leave one there to oh. remind you to like, hey, pick that back up so you don't hate yourself later. Um, anyways, welcome everyone to the Past Controller Podcast, a show where a couple of best friends talk about the latest in video games and nerd culture. Sometimes we have guests, sometimes we talk about Alan Wake 2 too much. Either way, we have a new episode for you each and every week. As always, I'm your host, Brennan Groom, and joining me on this lovely Friday evening is the anime senpai himself, Mr. Michael Desir. Mike, how are you tonight? Meh. Did you change the your layout in your office or just change your camera angle or something? I feel I like your background is camera. okay. I was gonna say I feel like your background is slightly different. Mm. It might have been that way is last that week a, too. Is and that I just a never jiu-jitsu said that. pillow? No, it's uh, it came with the chair. And How I the didn't fuck know does Todd do know that that was jujutsu kaisen? That's the, the actual oh. surprising thing that just came out of his um, mouth. Because Todd, Todd's Todd's in remember, he's 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 the <laughs> Fortnite father or whatever you call him. Oh shit! <laughs> they're in, they're now, in the now, game. Now he's the fucking I don't know. He's the Todoroki Toddy or something. I don't know. Yeah, work on that. Yeah. Also joining us tonight is Todoroki Toddy. Todd, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. Mike, Great. you drinking some fucking Minecraft? You know it. The Curious Sailor. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Whatever. There's glare, but you get the idea. And then rounding us out tonight, of course, is the Disney Daddy himself, Dominic Forty Dom. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Love to fucking hear it. Were you able to secure any Lorcana uh, sec- expansion two cards yet? You've yet to I, even seen those in the store. I have that order in at Amazon, but I'm still waiting to find out what it is. Um, yeah i I haven't uh, seen it anywhere. I actually meant to check to see if the castle had gotten any since they got the first run early. Oh, I'm curious. How I have been because they're a local game store. I'm uh, 
fairly disappointed in what I've seen from the local games. I mean, I understand that, like, for a lot of card shops, like, they have to build up their, like, player base. Mm-hmm. So they're putting cards to the side for the players that are in their leagues. That's fine. But when you're charging the regular person that walks into your store, I don't know, $12 for a booster or yeah more more than double the price 75 100 <laughs> for yeah yeah i like i i fully expect like if i go to harrison's and want to buy a comic or buy pokemon cards or or buy something i expect to pay like a little bit more it's a, it's a local sh- shop you know what i mean like they they don't have the 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 same luxury that like amazon and target does to undercut prices so i expect you know to to spend a couple dollars more but like when you start cracking over 50% more or like 60, 75% more a little questionable in certain things take like definitely yeah. taking advantage of this current situation with Lor- Lorcana specifically. You know what I bought at Harrison's for $25 was saga issue one first print. Wait, did you go they back to that? that? No, that, I'm, oh, no, I haven't then, been back, there. back then. But I, like when I got that they like they undersold me on that. I was like, yeah. okay. I'll take this. I mean, you were Todd used to go there like every week and get Dude, every Wednesday, Walking Dead like, comics. Like, yeah. It's like thirty dollars every, yeah. every like, and that sounds like it's not that much, but for comics, that's a fucking lot of money. I bought two of each fucking new comic that came out every week. Yeah, no matter what, didn't even care. Yeah, for a while, I also like I had my name on the like new release list. They'd put comics beside for me, but Shit, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I used to do uh, that. You know, new, funny, I used like, to do that new comics too because I, I wanted too. I wanted yeah. certain variants. When 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 we went back there like a couple weeks ago, I was like, "Fuck, I could get sucked right back into this." And I'm like, "I can't do this. Can't, yeah. can't do it." Well, now that that we're a little bit older and have like slightly, sometimes more ex- expendable income, it's like we were in there recently, me and you. We were like looking at the like the graded comics behind the counter, and it's like uh, that would look nice on the wall. I, don't I know. know I, want to spend that I kind know. Of money, but I wanted to it's buy a dope so fucking many. Cover. Uh, I know. So. I'm too scared to send my comics out to get graded. Like it's, I would send the it's saga. It's funny that you say that because I there are some Pokemon cards that I have that I'd like to get graded, but I'm just like too nervous that something would either happen in the mail or that like yep. I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm I don't think away. these companies would like swap my card out with a fake card or something, but like I I still have my original Pokemon cards and some of them are worth a decent amount of money. And I'm like, eh, I should probably try to get this graded at some point. Um, I just, have that Iron Man cover when he's like an alcoholic. I have like two separate Iron Man covers that like are in good conditions, the original comics. And I'm mm-hmm. like, fuck. I'm like, I don't know what to like, but yeah, I don't know. I'm scared. I wish you could just hand deliver them to the place. I wish I it was like a local I, one. I wish that too, because I would do it for a lot more cards. There, there is a grading company that apparently is going to cons, but I don't know. They do go to cons. Yeah. They, I don't know if it's one of the major yeah. ones. I think it's more expensive to to do it that way. Probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're getting what you're asking for at least. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I mean, imagine I doing that. They're, they're still, like, it's like a five point oh. There's <laughs> still no real guarantee that, like, you know, something. I, I again, I don't think that shady stuff is going on with those companies, but like. I I don't know. Like I have I have a Pikachu promo card that is a misprint that is worth like over a thousand dollars. I don't even know how I have this card to be honest. Like I don't know what I don't know what it came with. It must have come with something I bought back then. I don't even know how. Like it's wild to me that I still have the card and it's in good condition. Like it's it just sat in a storage bin because when I moved out of my parents' house, I took all of my like old video game stuff and Pokemon cards. And I was like, I never want to get rid of this. I'll just leave it in a storage bin. And, I'll, and that storage bin followed me everywhere I lived until we moved here. I was going through, cause we lived in our apartment for like eight years and I was going through stuff in the basement before we moved. And I like went, started going through my stuff of like old video games and com- uh, comics and uh, like Pokemon cards. There's some baseball cards in there too, but it's it's primarily Pokemon cards. I don't think I have any like sports cards worth fucking anything. Um, but I have some stuff that is like, like I have like 
the same thing with everything, like deck boxes. Like you buy like a starter deck that's like a pre-built deck for that expansion set or whatever. I have one of those for some fucking reason that is sealed, never opened. I don't know why I have that. It's like easily worth a couple hundred dollars. Like if I wanted I to sell it. have a very blonde sealed rookie card. Like I, I have a whole set from like Tops or something that I've never opened. It, it, it was his rookie year. Like my parents used to, my dad used to buy us like every Christmas. He'd give me and my brothers like, these things, and I think we all opened them. I didn't open this one. I still have yeah. it. I think I have it in my closet right now. Yeah, I have some. I have some silly stuff like that original, like a, uh, like starter box that came with a Machamp. Uh, I feel like everyone had that at some point. Like the first, uh, deck box. It came with a holographic Machamp. I feel like everyone had that Machamp card, but I have one of those sealed, and I don't know why I do. Um, my only guess that I can even think of is that like, I either like maybe someone gave it to me as like a gift for a birthday or holiday, like much later after that, like that set of Pokemon cards was out. And I was just like, Oh, I don't need to open this. And I just never did how I still have it. I beats me how that survived fucking 20 years plus anyways. We have a great show for you this evening. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping things before we roll right into it. The PTC Movie Club pick for November is Todd's pick, and it is They Live. Am I saying that? It's They Live, right? Yep. Uh, the movie They Live. I know we. I keep saying this every week, and then I never meant to write it down, but it's streaming somewhere. We looked it up. I think Mike said Paramount Plus maybe or something. I think you uh, asked me this before, and then we said we don't remember what it was. Yeah, so it's stream- it, it is streaming somewhere. I'm sure if you needed to rent it or buy it, it's probably you know you could probably find it for a good price. Um, so we'll chat about that. The plan right now is we will record sometime next weekend. Uh, it is of course. Wait, do we have two weeks left in the month? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it doesn't even fucking matter. Yeah. It doesn't even okay. Matter. So yeah, we we will record it. I mean, it, it still might cross over into the first couple days of december but that's you know still last week in november so we, we will talk about that probably not next week um but the week after so if you haven't watched that film yet make sure you get on that and we'll chat about that at the end of november early december and then reveal if we're going to do a special spinoff or if mike is going to pick for december i think we'll just have mike pick for december unless you don't want to do a december movie mike no it's fun Cool. Uh, a couple other quick housekeeping things. Uh, I guess uh, I was on uh, Super Deluxe Gamecast last week, so that should be up now over on their podcast feeds and other other feeds. So if you want to hear me talk about uh, Alan Wake Two, surprise, uh, a few other things, who who myself and the rest of them would cast in the Zelda movie that got announced as well as uh, the current state of AI affecting video games. So that's a, it was a great conversation. It was a great uh, crew over there. I was happy to finally be on on that show. So definitely check that out over on their podcast feeds. And I don't know if they also archive the video on YouTube, but it's it's over there. So I feel that. like the best thing for a Zelda cast would be just people we don't know. I don't think anyone famous would be in that movie. I... I mean, I I'd be well, fine with I that. Agree. But I agree. Children, I think, I think like, you're still gonna get like teenagers. Yeah, I, I still think you're gonna get. Oh, you will. I know. I don't disagree. With you I mean, unless they, they unless they, they do cast power, a but... young Link, young young Zelda, like maybe those actors will be like you know maybe not nobodies, but like up and coming actors and actresses. But I think people are gonna be too critical if they bring in people we already know, and it's such like a popular IP that's been fucking. It transcends like fucking actors at this point. Like it's been like I'm 42, yeah, and like I played the original on my Nintendo. You know, I like mean, it, it, it has. I think it's a really bad idea to do it live action. I do too. 100%. I, I think I think, it's I think it's probably easier for them to make that movie animated. I am yeah. very hopeful that it's fucking a good live action movie. Do I think it's gonna be? I mean, I'm gonna see it. It's fucking Zelda, and I love Zelda, so like I'm gonna see it. Uh, I mean, I saw the Mario movie. I enjoyed that movie a lot. Do I think it's like, you know, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, exactly. It's like, it, it is what it is. It's a Mario movie and yeah. it, it did what it needed to do for me. And it made me happy and it made me smile. Now, if super they, entertaining, 
went yeah. by quick. Like it fucking never felt like I was like bored or like yeah, yeah. It was, it like for for the for Nintendo's movies going forward, like Mar the next Mario movie needs needs to do a little bit more. Like I got the fan servicey like this is great to see. It's fun, good time, nostalgia jokes, and we'll still get all that stuff in a second Mario movie. <clears throat> but like I feel like they need to they need to do something a little bit more. It can't just be like here we go, cash in again. Um, with Zelda, I think because it's coming after Mario, I think it does need to be kind of like, yeah, it can have references and stuff, but I think it needs to... I guess the question for... This was not going to be the topic tonight, but now let's kind of just riff on it for a little bit. What what era of Zelda do you think this movie is going to take place in? Or do you think it's going to be like an amalgamation of things? I feel like amalgamation would be like way too much. Like I, I feel like that would be a really tough <laughs> to get people sucked into. I don't know. I honestly don't yeah. know. Like that's I, a great question. Like I, I feel know. like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, obviously like super super massive successes and current, but mm-hmm. I still feel like they might do. Like I feel like Ocarina feel is like just Link like it's past, so classic. I feel like Link to the Past might work good as a movie. I don't know. Oh, I think a lot of them could work well. Like I think I think the the lore of Zelda and that world and those stories I think are can can be adapted well to movies in most cases. Um but I I, I agree. I think it's probably like like Link to the Past Ocarina of Time just like that that specific setting of that version of Hyrule is just like a little more like a, it, it's like a, a little more. Hmm. It's like more high fantasy where Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild is like a little bit more. Like, I, I don't know what the right descriptor would be for it to be. It's like a little more technology it influenced. So, like, it still exists in that fantasy, you know, high fantasy world, but it has like way more, you know, alien type technology shoved in there i don't know what do you think dom yeah i don't know i think they should just do their own thing i think the story might be its own thing i don't think they're gonna copy a story especially if because i don't think i've seen aonuma attached to the movie yet he might be just because he's like a high like a top level zelda person at this point but he he's like the director of breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom uh in skyward sword so like him not being involved might mean like, oh, okay, they're going to do a different story or they're going to just do an old Zelda story. Who would you want to be Ganon? That's the, or Ganondorf rather, Dom. That's, 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 that's how we win Dom over. I don't know. I just saw that Machine Gun Kelly wants to be Link though. So I'm in. Yeah, I, so old, I, old. I don't want that. <laughs> I really don't want that. Uh, what about you, Mike? Who, who, who would be, because like at, at this point as it stands, are you even interested in this movie mike uh not a bit who would be i'm not gonna gonna lie you'd see it mike you would see it mike i'd see it it's yeah it's the executive producer of of morbius yeah Yeah. listen i'll see because i have to (laughs) i have to support my boy obviously of course but i don't really care Who, who would be a either link zelda or ganondorf casting that you would be your eyebrows go up you'd be like all right okay i'm a little more interested now um, who did Todd say earlier? Pedro Pascal, <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, and the trifecta. Uh, Just get them all. Chris the Pratt. The trifecta. Chris Pratt. There we go. <laughs> get them all in there. Butts will be in seats, mine included. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is there is there a real one though? Is there someone that you'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm down. Like right, who, if, who's if your do, boy or girl? If they do Michael Sarah as Tingle, then I I mean I'm good to go. I'm game. I mean, let's see if they put yeah. Michael Sarah as Link, I'm all in. If Same. Michael Sarah is in the movie, then it's a winner. <laughs> Game on. Really um, Listen, they got Seth Rogen in the Mario movie. Give us Michael Sarah in the Zelda movie. You know what I'm saying? Do they hire Zelda Williams to play something? I think she. Probably. I could see her just being a side character or cameo for sure. Yes. Uh, just yeah. just because uh, like that that is who she is named after, and Robin Williams was a big Zelda fan. Yes. Uh, I would imagine that. Link and Zelda would both be characters, depending on their age, would like Dom said earlier, like get a younger unknown actor to play either of those two. So I've got no 
opinion on what happens there. Then you've got your Ganondorf. That's the only other name besides Tingle. That's the only other character that I can name from the franchise. Oh, and the 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 horse. There's a oh, horse, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Bojangles. Yep. Definitely Mr. Bojangles, figure. get him in. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we're, yeah. we're gonna have Will Ar- We'll have. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have uh, Will Arnett play Epona. Yeah. Yep. So it would just be Ganondorf and. I don't know enough about Ganondorf to have any strong opinions about the guy. You know, I think Mike just jinxed us. I think we're going to have Timothy Shalamon now as Link. I feel like that's what's going to happen. I love how Todd just can't say his name. He says like a different last name every time. I refuse to. Why? You love (laughs) Timothy Champagne. I saw the other day uh, an interesting thought that not not half, uh, maybe half at this point. So, like, Peter Pan has like half been cast as women. It would be interesting mm-hmm. to see them cast Link as a woman. Yeah, I I'd be fine with that. I don't think they would. I mean, I this is spoiler. It's it's, it's elves. You I know, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I I said this on the the uh, oh, Superlux Gamecast. Liv Tyler. There you go. Notable elf. Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, Mister uh, Smith. Yeah, okay, I, I, I was, was going to bring him up, but I, and oh, I couldn't. Hugo weaving. Uh, I said Elliot Page would be an interesting link. I, again, I don't think Nintendo would do that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I l- there was oh my goodness, what is this woman's name? Um, Hunter Schaefer. Someone had said Hunter yeah, Schaefer I, should yeah, play like Zelda. People are, just, people are just trying to like fan cast off a look, so and I hate that shit. Well, like, I mean, like, I don't know what this person has acted in. Um, Euphoria. Okay, but like th- I have seen side by side pictures of like oh Zelda. Zendaya, yeah Zendaya, <laughs> Zelda from you know X game, and then this person you know whatever, and like they could definitely play a specific Zelda, like a hundred percent, like has certain facial features and stuff that like are very very Zelda esque. I don't think that Nintendo was willing to take any risks with that kind of stuff, though. And I'm, and in some ways, I, you know. Oh, I, I don't think the, I, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna play it safe, and they're going to they're yeah. going to cast. I think mostly well known actors. I, I think that's just yeah. what they're going to do. So, Chris yeah, yeah, Chris, Chris Pratt, Pratt, Timothy Chalamet, Timothy Chalamet, yeah. uh, and, uh, Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Pedro and Pascal. you know, if we can get The Rock in there somewhere, put him in there. No, oh, yeah, no, the no. Has to be in there. If The Rock if, is Ganondorf. I, Perfect. No, be a Gorgon no, or whatever that I called. don't. I do not. Listen, if The Rock wants to show up as a fucking Goron, great. But if they yeah. fucking That's cast The Rock They're, as Ganondorf, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to eye roll so hard. I just can't. I can't with that. I don't want that. Yeah, and does that side pose, but then lifts his eyebrow up yeah. a little bit. <laughs> like, I like The Rock, but I just, I can't see The Rock playing the Ganondorf that I need on the screen. I just can't see that. So I just need The Rock to do a movie that's not The Rock. Like, I just need him to just, like, step out of the comfort. Like, he needs to, like, him and Will Smith both need to just step out of their comfort zone and do a fucking movie where, like, they actually are not themselves. Because, I don't know. I feel like they always just play the same characters. Okay, you said you said Will Smith, but in my head you said The Rock, so I was just uh, like <laughs> waiting for you to say Kevin Hart because Kevin Hart does the same thing, <laughs> where he's just Kevin always Hart Kevin Hart. Tingle too. I feel like Kevin Hart would be a good Tingle, and then uh, maybe The Rock is Link. I don't know. If they had, like, if they had Kevin Hart what is if, Tingle. <laughs> what if what if uh, Kevin Hart is uh, Navi and oh. The Rock is Link? Okay. Yes. Oh. Um, there it is. Now I'm you have yeah. you have officially I, I made the casting that would make me <laughs> not go see this movie. Yo, that'll get me my butt in the theater. That'll get butts day. in seats. Yeah, for, I don't for have you. my Kevin Hart impression that, down. That yet, would get yeah, butts in for him seats. to go like, "Hey, listen, and then, throughout half and the movie, if The Rock is Link, then Vin Diesel's got to be Ganondorf, right? <laughs> oh, oh no, they're beefing. Well, I guess they are beefing. Now we've got now we've got the international market. I mean. I think, I think we just, I think we're onto something here. We, we've put this down. So here's you're, my you're question getting, now. You're getting butts into seats for the wrong reasons. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> well, they're uh, still in the seats. It, that's true. They are as, matters. as the resident, um, legend of Zelda expert, your boy here. Um, do, do you think that after this movie becomes a huge success with Dom's inspired casting, will they do the subsequent films? Because a lot of these, Legend of Zelda games, they're not direct sequels. They're they are different heroes of uh, Hyrule all over the place. Do we do a new cast 
for each new movie. Uh, I think that would be good. I'm kind of down with that. They're not going to do that, but I'm down with that. Yeah, because you're... You're sticking with the Rock as Lincoln. Yeah, of course. It's going to be so good and groundbreaking. They're like, fuck, they can't, they can't cast they someone can't else. Like, they, like I think this is a horrible idea. I don't think that. I don't think doing this movie is a good idea for Nintendo at all. I think it could tarnish the Zelda brand, even though it's not going to like not the game. I, I like, yeah, like I don't think it's going to be good. I yeah, don't, but I, I, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. They end got the, the Maze Runner the director. That guy's the, like not a good director. The, they got like horrible writers. Like the movie whether it's good or bad is never gonna like in turn affect what like we're still gonna get no we're gonna get game. You know I mean? like we're gonna get, we're gonna get yeah, good yeah. games like the games are gonna change like, because the, 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 the next legend of zelda game is canceled is canceled because yeah. the movie is so bad yeah, we just give up nintendo is shutting down all their offices they our next game is them. the legend of zelda the movie the game Oh my they goodness, could get away no. with this for the Mario because, like, I feel like animation, no matter what, like, you know, like, it's safer. You know, it's not going like, to. I feel like Zelda needs to be. They also had be, illumination attached to it. Which I don't think yeah. they're that good, though. They're not, like, known as, like. Wait, but they get people there. Wait, yeah. illumination? Mm-hmm. Are we drama about the Mario movie now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, I mean, I would say Illumination is respected anime. No, they respect it, but they, they haven't. They, the first two. Um, Whatever those movies they did, Spiggle Spiggle with me. Movie. yeah, they were good. I actually like the third one the best, but like they've every movie they put out after the first two has been like progressively panned. I feel like no, I feel like um, they did a Grinch movie that I feel like people enjoyed. The Secret Life of Pets, I think, did decent. Yeah, people like the Grinch movie. You got all the Minions and Despicable movies. Uh, I don't know about like the other Dr. Seuss ones, like the Lorax. Um, in it, so it's I mean, cool. I don't know if these movies are good, but I'm assuming Sing did well enough that they made a sequel out of it. Like, uh, yeah, Sing, Sing, is Sing the franchise now. I don't know any of these other things. I don't. Maybe they're shorts or something. It looks like they're they're shorts. Maybe do they do the Pixar thing? Do they do like little mini oh, things right, before the movie nice. comes starts? Mm. Uh, they did things with uh, Kevin Hart's bunny character. Okay. From Secret Life of Pets. Life of Pets. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean... And then there's probably things with Kevin and uh, that other minion whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. Banana. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't... Mike, I don't Mike's see. a real big uh, minion. A real big fish. So this, really? this, this film producer that's attached to the Zelda movie, Avi Arad, they are attached yep. to... It, I'm just going off. I'm just going stuff. big stuff. Big I'm go, stuff. I'm Morbius, of, the Brat, the Bratz movie. Hold on, I'm going off of IMDb, and he, his name is attached to Into the Spider Verse. Correct. Okay. Also Morbius. Also Morbius. Uh, X Men <laughs> 2000. I was X Men 2000. But like, how much? Also it, last name. Like, I what believe. what does this person do for the movies? You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what do you they do, do here? The film? So oh, like that's one. that's the extent of it, you know what I mean? Like, and I will say, Miyamoto is gonna probably be very aggressively involved in mm-hmm. what this movie is gonna be, it, and other people at Nintendo. So like, at the bare minimum, worst case scenario, we get something that's like the Mario movie in terms of like it's a fun time. Maybe it's not telling a compelling anything special. It's a little bit different though, I think, just because like. Again, I, I, I think would, the problem is that a live action that, Zelda that's movie the can't do what the Mario movie did. Yeah. Yes. It can't just be like a fun, like, we're going to tell a bunch of like Easter egg yeah. inside Mario jokes, and then the rest is going to be like a kid's movie. We're also movie. talking about a character that I, never talks, too. You know? I think like, so it's like that's a whole nother. Yeah, but I think that, that whatever. It, that's whatever. I, but I, I think that the best thing that they should do, whether they, you know, riff off of a game story or just copy a game story or do something different. I think it should just be us kind of just walking into an already established story and already established link. Like, I think that the player should already kind of be in place. Like I, this, sh- I don't think it should be like a origin story of link. I think that would be a, not a good movie. Like that would just be a waste like the people that are going to see the movie are going to see it because they already know the characters you know what i mean you you'll obviously that's get... not how you make a movie though 
I know no, that's a bad thing. Can... They got to get the other people in the seats. Yeah, but like, there's a way to do it without it being like Link wakes up in a fairy's like, you got to come meet the great Deku tree. And like, I, I, I don't know. That's don't probably, know. You, you probably just described the first 15, 20 real, minutes of for, the That's exactly Listen, what if it's 15, do. 20 no minutes, that's do. one thing. But if it's like the, if the fucking plot of the movie is like the quest for Link to do one specific thing that is like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's yeah, this is why I think it's a bad idea. This is what, like, this is, I just can't see Listen, this in my, I'm not, I'm not, in my, I like, want it to work. Pie in the sky, I want this to be so well done that it's like, oh, shit, we got a new Lord of the Rings on our hands. And it's just not going to fucking happen. What was, but was it, could it Upgrade, be. the it movie where be. you were in first person, Mike? Doom. Oh, Hardcore Henry? Hardcore Henry. What if they did a Hardcore Henry movie? Like, like, style movie for... So like, there wasn't a Link actor. You were Link. That would be groundbreaking horrible. if you ignore the fact that they did it already with Hardcore Henry. I I, I never watched it, so I don't I think a lot of people that. did. No, I don't. Let me I don't, just make sure. I don't think a lot of people. It, it had the dude from District Nine in it though. It, it was like, Hardcore Henry because yeah. I I said upgrade and it wasn't upgrade. No upgrade hex. So yeah, he, you see yeah. the character. In that. All right, let's see. Wes Wes Ball directed the Maze Runner movies. I've never seen any of them, but they're not good. They're not the best. You would never last two minutes out in the scorch, uh, which I believe is a line from the second movie. A bunch of I can't speak on them because I wasn't a fan of those books. So, like, I, mean, I don't know if the people who like the books. I like think them. I watched the first one. The first one was like, I don't know, interesting enough. First one's the highest reviewed one, and the rest of them are like 40, yeah. 30. Yeah. So they came out when like those YA movies were kind of on the downswing anyway. So the yeah. other thing that this person I has think attached the first to... one caught that caught the peak, and then. Yeah, is is obviously they have the upcoming Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. What mm. what's the temperature on that? Like, have the trailers for that done I, anything for any of you? Uh, or not? I'm excited. I've been meaning to watch the re- is it like, connected I saw to the, the other ones? One. I, I think no so. Idea. Yeah, yeah. But is, it, is like the same director connected to it or no? No. Then yeah, then I have no interest. Because I, I feel like good. the director of the first one is someone that I know. first three. He's no, he's a, he's a big guy. I forget his name. I'm yeah, but no, like, oh, it might be Matt Was Reeves. The same guy. Matt Reeves, I think it might yeah. be Matt. It is Matt Reeves. Um, yeah, so I've heard that they're all good. I've only seen the first one. I've been meaning to watch the other two. But I hear that it is actually a really strong trilogy of films. No, the first two are amazing. I haven't seen the third. And the third has Woody Harrelson in it, too, which I'm a huge fan of. But uh, Wait, which movies are we talking about? The uh, more recent trilogy of the planet. Rise, of the it's, it's Dawn, Rise, of the was, Rise of the Planet of the Apes was, not, it was directed by Richard Wyatt. I don't okay, think they were directed the by the same two, person. The other two was Matt Reeves in, right? Or am I wrong? Rise is the second movie. That's why I don't, See, think, like, they, the, I don't think they the were The naming convention by. always fucking threw me off. But yes. I think Dawn is the first one. Dawn is the first uh, one? I think hold Dawn on, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Rise was the first? I don't know. I don't know their names. Rise, sorry, it is. It's Rise, Dawn, War. Okay. Um... The second one was directed by Matt Reeves. The third one was directed by Matt Reeves. Okay, so he did the other two. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So the person that's attached to the movie right now to write the film is Derek Connolly, who, according to IMDb, is known for Safety Not Guaranteed from 2012. I don't know what that is. I like movie. that movie. It's a good that movie. That was the one with Jake Johnson, right? Jake I have no idea. Uh, no, it's the one with uh, Aubrey Plaza where the guy, she's like, the guy's convincing her that, I think it's that one where he's like, he can time travel, and she's like. Oh, I do remember that one. All right, well, oh, that... actually, the, sorry, the I'm going back to the director, Wes Ball. He was, do you remember seeing trailers for Mouse Guard? No, I, I haven't, but he like is a, directing that as well. It was yeah. like a, well, it's canceled. Oh. <laughs> it got can- it got canceled when Fox bought. I mean, Disney bought Fox, mm-hmm. but it did look interesting at least. Oh, yeah. Jay Johnson is in Safety Not Guaranteed. Yeah, Mark, I just, Mark I Duplass movie. and Aubrey Plaza, uh, yeah. but also then attached to Jurassic World, Jurassic World Dominion, and Jurassic World Ugh. Fallen Kingdom. I haven't seen uh, any of those Fox. films. Uh, we Wait, who are we talking Fox. about again? The writer of that is attached to the film. Okay, because yeah, so the director is Colin <laughs> Trevorrow, who directed what one of those Jurassic movies. The director of Safety Not Guaranteed, sorry, sorry. is yeah. directed we one of the, the draft at this point. I mean, they also have writing credits for Detective Pikachu, which I personally 
I think this is a pretty fun movie. Uh, Dom's not going to like this. Also uh, s- helped write The Rise of Skywalker, which is not promising, maybe. <laughs> uh, Rise of Skywalker, which was supposed to be directed by Colin Trevorrow. Colin Trevorrow. <laughs> yep. um, they wrote Kong Skull Island. I like Skull, I like Skull Island. Was Again, I was one? just watching. Was that the first one? Or was King no, Kong Skull the first Island- one? King Kong was the first one. Skull Island's the one that has uh, As Loki Bobby, and, uh, um, Brie Larson. Jack Black? Yeah, Brie Larson. Or was he in King Kong? He's in King he Kong. He was in King Kong. Yeah. Okay. I, I really think, though, that, like, not that this stuff is irrelevant. Uh, it's definitely relevant to the conversation. But I, I do think it really is going to just, like, <laughs> nothing matters. And, I, I like, the, the order of events is we're going to get a random Nintendo Direct at some point. That is going to be them revealing the cast. And it's not going to be anything else about the movie. It's going to be a scratch your head bizarre moment. Just like it was when they revealed the fucking Mario movie. And we had to wait whoever knows how long to find out how the fuck is Chris Pratt going to sound like Mario. No, the, That reaction though when they did that during the direct was probably one of my favorite directs. Because I was like yeah. it was just like wait what? Wait what? Wait yeah. Seth Rogen? Yeah no, so like, like, I, I expect them to follow a similar order of events where it's like. They will have a random Nintendo Direct where they reveal the core cast. And then we don't see or hear anything else about the movie for a while. It really just is going to come down to the first trailer, which is who like years away at this point, I would imagine. Um, unless we start hearing other... Because, again, it's different that it's a live-action thing. Like When they start filming it, people are going to know. And people are going to take fit footage and like take pictures and the same thing where everything gets leaked. Like there, there will be stuff online and it's going to be like gonna film it in like New Zealand. Or something, well, that's the though, thing. Like, like it, I think it really is going to come down to like a, a good barometer of what this movie is going to be is where are they filming it? Because if they're like doing a lot of this CGI green and screen, like green screen yeah, stuff, yeah. it can work and it can be fun and good. But I do think they need to lean into it. The bare minimum, like, environmental I'm viewing real, it like they're, real, they're doing it in Vancouver. Sense. They're doing it in I'm, Vancouver. They're going to pretend that they link has been traveled has been sent yeah. to New York. They're going to film it in Vancouver. What if it's, it's a modern take, water. modern take on the Legend of Zelda story? I, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it if it's good. I don't like I'm fine I feel with like them. they need to I feel like they need to treat this, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but they need to treat this like Lord of the Rings kind of thing. Like they I, need to make I it. would love if they did. That would be just best case scenario. Just real quick, when you said he wrote Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, or Story by, he, I don't know. Yeah, he wrote the Colin Trevorrow script. The good one, for, the good one that was yeah. supposed to. Oh, yeah, so the not the that movie that good. came out. Yeah, it's yeah. As, oh. as well as a shelled version of the Rise of Skywalker. That is interesting information because I've heard other people talk about this, you know, the, the bare bones that we know about this film. And a lot of people eye roll when they bring up rise of skywalker but to know that it was not actually the movie that people saw is is a different this, conversation this rolling stones article that i'm reading says it was the shelved ver- the shelved version of the rise of skywalker interesting um i will say too i think it was the director not the writer someone dug up a very old tweet from west ball that was like you know the next movie that someone needs to you know blah blah blah, blah it's got to be the legend of zelda so like at the bare minimum Hopefully, he he's like a fan and like maybe yeah. can just understand the game on a, on a level that would help him translate that onto the screen. Because it's like the, that's the other thing that I think makes video game adaptations, you know, difficult in a lot of scenarios is that it's it's two different mediums and it's very easy. I mean, we've seen it for years. I mean, I. I would argue we're just now slowly starting to crack into how to make good video game adaptations. Like Last of Us, not a perfect show. I think it has its high moments, has some low parts, but I think it does a good job of transforming what is, you know, maybe not an interesting game in a lot of ways into like a good thing to watch. Um, I think the things like Mario and things like Sonic... Like, I still haven't watched the second Sonic movie. Um, but, like, I thought the first Sonic movie was fun. And it's like, you are you have to make this based off of a game that doesn't have much to work with. It has a setting, and it has characters, and it has a villain, and it has, like, a overarching plot. And, like, 
you know, 20 plus years of game and character and, and comics and other things to pull from, but you still got to turn something that isn't really a story centric and it's very much about platforming thing into a different, completely different form of entertainment. Um, you know, obviously certain things like The Last of Us is just a recent example is a very story narrative focused game. So it's like, yeah, that there's a lot of things there to make that an easier transition to the screen maybe. But, you know, a lot of impactful but Ironically, things. the best thing that The Last of Us did was something that wasn't even part of the game. I know, you know yes, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, bit, it's great for that too. Yeah. But like, and that's the other thing that I hope is that like they're allowed to maybe take some chances with Zelda. Like I, I, I would hope that they look at obviously the monetary success of the Mario movie is something they want to repeat, but I would hope that at least some people higher up in the business side of things would look at some of the negative stuff. And be like, all right, what do we? Need? How do we need to iterate on this in a Mario movie too? And how do we need to iterate on this if we pull Zelda onto the screen or whatever else we may decide to pull onto the screen? So, you know what I wish they would do for their next movie, but obviously, like it would make no sense is a Metroid movie because it just doesn't have the fan base that like obviously Zelda does. But I feel like they could almost have like a Ripley type story of aliens, like kind of fucking you know like masqueraded in like the metroid world and like you know i feel like that could work really well as a live action movie if done correctly but brie larson's um, been trying to fan cast herself as samus for a long time i I mean (laughs) like i mean she's in the suit the whole time so like i mean i think she's a good actress anyways but like i just think that that's something that could be really cool but i i just think zelda's gonna be a very fucking challenging thing it's definitely gonna be challenging uh i i'm just you know i'm i'm putting my my hopeful hat on that it's that it's good i mean it has off it'd have to be really just, bad for me to see the movie and be like fuck like at the bare minimum i'm hoping to at least like be entertained i just read another list of uh of projected like people, people. that they'll like look at rolling stones list and mm-hmm. one of them is a Sony Golden Child who has recently appeared in a video game movie. Oh, oh your boy Spider-Man. Tom Holland. Like, honestly, oh. if this was like ten years ago. Tom Holland would have probably been yeah. perfect to play. He's, he's been fan cast other... as him forever now, though. Too like people were like, "There's a Netflix show, and, and they're gonna do Tom Holland." The other one was uh, uh, Todd Sondra, Mark Wahlberg, but uh, Joe Jean Reed. He he, the kid that played Joe Jean. Uh, he was in Maze Runner, apparently. Uh, he was in Queen's Gambit, just, I guess. He was Ferb and Phineas and Ferb. Uh, he must be like 25 now. He can't play a... Like, he is born in 1990. It, it would be an inspired... He has 30? like a young face. Okay. It would be an inspired take, but I wouldn't be mad if they did it. I, I still don't think they'd do it for Link, but I'd like to at least see this person in the movie, if if not Link. Uh, fucking Barry Keegan, I think would be. He's too old, but I do love Barry. He Keegan. has a young I'm face, a fucking... though. Like he does have a young, like a, it's a very like young looking face, in my opinion. I'm a big Barry Keegan fan. Like he's the guy who I want to see in every movie. Not well, fucking... that's the thing. Like I Tim... think like it, you want to get someone that's not a little bit Timothy younger, Chamberlain, a little bit younger that has some star power. Now, I mean, he was in um, uh, the Banshees of Inisherin. He's in some new movie that people like the salt burn that people are seeming like going kind of nuts for. I don't know if it's out yet or it's coming out very soon. Um, I mean, he was in your favorite Batman movie, Mike. I mean, barely. I figured you'd say Eternals at some point, but oh, yeah, I forgot he was in Eternals. <laughs> I think I just forgot about Eternals. I always forget he's in Eter- Eter- uh, Eternals. So is he? He's the one that like is in the shack, right? He's like, I think it could control mind or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember. I saw that movie once. I forget. We all saw it once and then forgot. Listen, I think that's the most underrated Marvel movie of like these last couple of years. Personally, I think the CGI is top notch. I think fucking the acting's great. I think it's actually an interesting story for once. I don't know. Hot take, there is, I guess. There is, yeah, I'm trying, again, combined, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to combine hot takes and a hot toddy into some. There's something there. <laughs> 
I don't know exactly what, but there's something there. Todd, Todd uh, can be like our Andy Rooney that at the end of every episode, he's just like, yeah, no, I, dude, think, I just, yeah. I just think the Eternals is a great tried film. to tackle on too much for that movie. I think it could, would have, I think we talked about this. It would have worked better as a show. There, there's something but about Gary. It was, it, it was definitely way too long. Yeah, it was way too long. hundred percent. But I do think it had the right actors. I think that like, I think it's the best CGI that they've ever done. Like when this, the, the girl, the, the, the speedster in it, that whole scene is like, looks amazing it's better than anything they've done with the flash like anything like not like they did right. anything great with the flash but like. i'm just i just googled top young actors 2023 number one florence Pugh. zelda i don't know link she could be linked to she's already she's already playing princess Cyril in in dune part two yeah this, she's in too much this, this she's universes. getting to be too much right now too though uh jenna ortega i no. I don't know. I don't think they could be oh. Zelda. Uh um, what is what is like young actress? I don't know. I just typed in young actress. <laughs> I I just I don't I don't know. Uh Austin Butler. Is that the guy that plays Elvis? No, please it is. don't no, no. I hate him. Also in Dune Part Two. Another person I hate. Uh Zendaya. Which I mean Also in Dune Part Two. Oh shit. Yeah, a lot of and then following followed by Timothy Shalimar. Oh, <laughs> Timothy Charmander. Uh, Storm Reed. I don't know who that is. Oh, definitely in uh, Dude Part 2. <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a trend here. Uh, there's someone saying know. Josh Giddy from the Oklahoma Thunder. Dune Reed, <laughs> like, uh, really... Storm Reed is in Euphoria, When They See Us, Last of Us, The Invisible Man, and Suicide Squad. Uh, Barry Keegan, Anya Taylor-Joy. I love Anya Taylor Joy. If they put her in the Mario movie and in the Zelda movie, I'm gonna be very confused. I don't know. I feel like she'd be a good Zelda, but like I don't. I I, I, don't, I, think, I think she'd be a good Zelda too. Zelda. But like I don't. Yeah. Don't no, do I, I don't do it. both. Uh, listen, if you're gonna do that, then also make Jack Black Ganondorf. I don't make the rules. That's just that's what you <laughs> right. have to do. But then that would make Chris Pratt Link, and I. So well, I honestly, this is the one thing I'd be okay with Chris Pratt being in. If they to- if they hired all the same cast as Mario, I'd listen, be like, this listen, is the best I, 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 I didn't even think of this, and this would actively make Todd mad. Ready? I'm going to say it, and it's going to make Todd mad. Zelda as Millie Bobby Brown. Ugh. <laughs> no. no. That's, it's going to happen. Uh, Todd uh, Storm Reed was... Storm Reed was Riley in Last of Us. Mm, yeah. Okay, I was wondering who they were in Last of Us. Yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, Kelvin Harrison Jr. I don't know this actor. I don't know who Kelvin Harris is. Bella Ramsey. I mean, I could see them doing that. I I don't know if they'd play Zelda, but uh, Letitia Wright. Rachel Zegler. I don't know who that is. I definitely know that name. West Side Story yeah, remake. Snow White. Shazam. Snow White. Oh, okay. Yeah. Snow White. Um, Alex Wolf. I don't know. He was in the Nickelodeon series, The Naked Brothers Band. Oh, Dom, you love that show. Oh, uh, yeah. That was my favorite. Uh, Jacob Tremblay. I know his name, too. He was in he was 2015's in room, the room, right? Yeah. Or Room, rather. Yeah, I room, saw him. Not yeah. The Room. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Very the different room. films. <laughs> uh, McKenna Grace. She was in uh, Ghostbusters. Okay. Afterlife. Jack Dylan Grazer. Uh, They're in HBO limited series. Too. We are who we are. Uh, voice work in Luca and Ron's Gone Wrong. Uh, also played Freddie Freeman in Shazam. Yes, Shazam. There it is. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I liked I, I liked Freddie. Listen, I like this actor and I wouldn't be mad if they were in the Zelda movie. I just don't, I guess maybe link, but I don't want them as link, but maybe will Poulter. No, he's too old. I'm still confused by this list of like, I, yeah, yeah I don't, actors. I don't know. Is the first well, one will yeah. Poulter's like, like become like, it's so funny yeah, some of these people I, are around our I, age. Yeah, I can like, I don't think, like I, can, this goofy I think, bastard, I think it's like 30 like is, is what they're doing. Yeah. Listen, will Poulter, I think could maybe, even though I think they should cast someone older for Ganondorf, I could maybe see Will Poulter as a as an inspired, uh, whatever 
good on Dwarf Take. Uh, this next one, I actually now this this might be in my one of my top in my head for who I would like to see play Zelda, uh, Saoirse Ronan. Yeah, I think yeah, she's I a good actress. Uh, yeah, and she great. she does like her facial features are kind of. Yeah, I could see her totally. Kinda I think Zelda. that's probably the best pick we've picked for Zelda, or that we have heard for Zelda. I mean, that, that I was just a list. Think. That was just a random, I mean, I don't know, random, but it was just I whatever that, this list was of top actors. I don't think they're going to get, like, actors like that, though, who are, like, Oscar-nominated actors, because see, I think... I think here's, you're wrong. Here's why, though. Here's why, though. I think that everyone knows that this is going to be a huge risk, and, like, there's not going to be people who, like... But I those are the things you fucking... Then. Listen, listen. You get that same bullshit with fucking Timothy Chalamet saying, I don't want to be in the MCU, but I'll be in Dune. What the fuck is the difference? Because you got fucking Dennis Villanueva, the best director out there right now, making a movie. You're going to do anything. That that guy hasn't and made Dune a fucking single movie. And Dune is based off of a, a well-regarded sci-fi novel. So, and, so, and so, like, so, you got, so, like, so, 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 I said, and it's been a movie once, and it already bombed once. It can't yeah, so yeah. it can't. It's it can't not even a bad twice. movie. It was David I, Lynch. David I, Lynch. It was like nothing. I know. But, I'm very I mean, curious no, now. Yeah, is, yeah. is there a way? I'm sure there is. We. Is there a quick people way? Don't say, people don't say no to Dennis filling the way. Well, like, is there a crazy if you would? Is there a quick way to see what the conversation sure. was like when Fellowship of the Ring was announced as being a film? Yep. Let's. Pull up the old Ain't It Cool News website. Well, I think I they mean, were all pissed about that film. I think that it's easier to translate a book to screen than a video game that In doesn't some have ways. a talking character. It doesn't have a talking yeah, but the character. Talking, you cannot get hung up on the talking character because that's just you that's going to – It's not. That, it it's going it to get thrown out the window. Fans, How is that going to be completely be so jarring that someone talks? What are you talking because about? Because it, it just changes the whole dynamic of like every Zelda game we've ever I, played. I think it's fine. I think it'll be no, fine. No, I'm sure it'll be fine, but like it's uh, if to he doesn't fair, say excuse Lord me Rings, princess once, then I'm gonna be pissed. Lord of the Rings had already been adapted once at that point too. Oh it has? It was a cartoon in the East. Oh the cartoon, yeah, no, I saw that. Yeah. I thought um, you meant like live action. If no. I'm if I'm an actor that would be in contention for this film, and I'm also a fan of Zelda, or at least paying attention to enough to know, you know, what that is and how big it is and whatever. I don't really think there's a lot of things that you can attach yourself to, even especially if it's a one-time thing, like a one. I feel like, like this a, be the king of the Razzies if it's done wrong, like this movie. Like, I yeah, but I don't think that ruins careers. anyone's career. That ruins the director's career, the writer's uh, career. It doesn't ruin the fucking can... actor's career. No, it doesn't. No way. I, I'm not saying this is definite. I'm just saying like there's a lot to like. It's I the think, same thing we were talking about the MCU recently, and I'm like, I don't think actors are like, yeah, I, I need to jump into the MCU it's, now. I you think know, it's, like, I think it is backwards. I, was working on them, I like, think if you are an established actor and you well, choose you to do, uh, I think if you're an established actor and you choose to do like, you know, uh, MCU, DC, other thing being, uh, you know, adapted, I think it's a different conversation than if you're, you know, maybe become well known because of those things like it's probably hard for daisy ridley to shake star wars and get other specific roles i feel like it's the same thing for tom holland i feel like he kind of gets cast in a lot of the same type of actiony things that maybe don't have a lot of substance i'm not actually familiar with tom holland he's actually done IMDb. movies with substance but people just don't watch him like uh he's, he's done a bunch of movies recently that like they say he's good in it, but yeah. like I think he's a good actor. Right? But I don't think that like I like he, if he's in a spy a future Spider Man product that doesn't do well, I don't think that ruins Tom Holland's career. If he continues to do him, I mean unless he's like contracted in for X amount of things, that's you know, I I, I don't think it necessarily I, I think it's probably more hurtful to the writers and directors. Unless it depends the acting on how bad is the bad. movie is. If the acting I don't is even bad, think the different. acting is bad, but like if the movie is bad, and I just don't I don't see like listen, I want this movie to be good. I just don't see how they're gonna make it. I, I can't foresee this movie being good, and I hope I fucking eat my words because I would love this movie to be good. I just don't see how it's going to be good. Yeah. Do you, I mean again, there's, me a an of, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways for this to go bad. 
Uh, yeah, I think I think it's like more more ways for it to go bad than for it to go good. I it's think just like, it's an I uphill think battle. if I, I'm if I'm an actor in the scenario where I could maybe be cast as a main character in Zelda, like I take that fucking risk because again, like there is a shot, there's a long shot that this could be, you know, a modern Lord of the Rings. You know what I mean? Like high fantasy. They have money behind it. It has Nintendo behind it and Sony Pictures. Like, there's money behind it. Um, so who knows? But uh, real quick, IMDb's hot young male actors 2023. Actors age 35 and younger. Number one, Timothy Chalamet. Number two, Shocker. Raymond Ablack. I'm not familiar with this person. No uh, idea most known for Degrassi, Narcos, and Ginny and Georgia. Is Degrassi still in the air? Yeah, I was like, what the I fuck? I have no idea. There must be an updated version of something. Um, yeah. Well, it's a, it, for for this actor, it says Degrassi 2010, so maybe he, he was just on old Degrassi. Uh, number three, Austin Abrams. Walking Dead, Euphoria, Dash and Lily, Gangster Squad. I don't know. Uh, number four, uh, Alex Aono. Uh, he is an I actor. think we're in trouble. Todd, Todd, Todd the only person that we know is, is Timothy, Timothy Chalamet. Well, Austin, 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 Austin Abrams looks like a bootleg Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> if you look at his pictures, he we looks have like Timothy like... Chalamet at home. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Uh, Alex Aono, actor composer known for Lego Batman movie, Office Christmas Party, and Bling. Keegan Allen, Pretty Little Liars, Black Hat. See, all these people that, are, that you're listing right now are like people from like shitty shows and movies. I don't know any watched. of these people. Robbie no, 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 Mel, I feel like, like I've heard that name before. I think they're trying to go for like they. they, they obviously oh, I know Robbie Mel. That's uh, that's Stephen Mel's brother, right? Robbie oh, Mel, yeah. Stephen Mel's brothers. Yes, and again, how what hot young actors? Is that what you're looking at? Robbie Mel has got to be in his thirties. <laughs> no, this is. I, yeah, I, but I, said, not, it. Right? I said it. Actors age thirty five <laughs> and younger. <laughs> Uh, I I don't know I I'm, I'm Robbie done. Bell thirty five. I'm done looking at this list on IMDb. <laughs> AV Club eighteen rising stars will be lighting up the screen in twenty twenty three. It's Number one, show. Robbie Bell. <laughs> Brendan, no. who the fuck are these people? Bella Bella Ramsey, Tim Kel- Chalamet, Kel- Kelvin <laughs> Harrison Jr. Uh, breakout work and it comes at night. Monsters and men, loose waves and more. It looks like a lot of independent stuff. Calvin Harris. Like who would Bella Calvin Ramsey Harrison? play? Like what are they yeah. saying for Bella Ramsey? He was in. Uh, he was. I think he was BB King. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yeah, oh, this uh, three and a half hour moon. So, oh yeah, he was BB King and Elvis. Yes, you're right. That I don't know why that was yeah. buried in this description of their their work. Yeah, you guys saw Elvis. It was I, a three and a half hour movie with with your favorite Austin Butler. Yeah, Jazz Sinclair. I don't know Revolution and the Vampire Diaries. Uh oh, they're in Gen V, the boy spinoff. I haven't watched. I haven't watched, I haven't yet. watched it either. Devry Jacobs. Uh, I don't know. A lot of You're reading all these names, but they're just going to hire Timothy Chalamet, some unknown it's, it's actor, from, Timothy, or, Timothy or some unknown familiar. actor from some English TV show that we've never heard of. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Anyways, it's probably the most likely answer, to be honest. This episode turned into not what we were going to talk about tonight, and now we're done talking about this, and we're gonna. Really it's gonna. It's up. definitely Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> just fucking sign on the dotted line. Damn. All right. Dom's going to lock it in. What, uh, listen, we can, we can, uh, my guess is we maybe get a cast tease next year at some point, maybe late next year. We want to, we want like to lock way in longer. early. Hold on. I'm pulling up my notes. Let me pull up my notes. This is, this will be points, points added to the, the scoreboard for the year that the names get. Hold revealed. on. I got to look up obscure, uh, English TV shows real quick. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. Uh, let's see. Zelda movie predictions. Points. Oh, I know who they'll go. get. They'll get the little boy from from the witch. Points go to. Well, now they're probably thirty five, Mike. So, 
It works. Yeah, probably. Well, no, we'll get the baby from the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Points go to person, year, actors revealed. Okay. Does anyone want to? We'll, we'll just we'll just do. Yep. I'm gonna give we'll my. Do, fr- we'll do I, Link, I first Zelda, Ganondorf. All right. Can I give my Link first? Yeah. I mean, you can you can lock in. You can. I mean, you guys can guess the same people too because it's you're just trying to get the points. I'm locking in Cody Smith McPhee for Link. Cody. He was in the Power Smith of the Dog. He got McPhee? nominated for an Oscar. Yep. I've, He's fucking... I've seen that name before, and okay. I thought it was for like Link. Okay. Yep. Anyone I'm else want to in lock Anna in? Taylor, okay. Anna Taylor Joy for Zelda. I'm, I'm going with it. I'm okay. Okay. Going. Okay. Here it is. She just yeah. has that. She has that unique look. She's oh, yeah. regal. She's just she's, real. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's not. You don't yeah, have to fucking the do makeup already. on her. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You know, it doesn't matter. Fucking double down. All right. Uh, wait, you I'm gonna Ganondorf? Lo- you got Ganondorf? Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, I'm gonna go with the Rock for Ganondorf. Oh my god. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Mike, you got, uh, you got any? I, yeah, I'm gonna lock in my boy for Ganondorf, the one, the only. Was I going to do a bit or was I going to have a serious answer? Uh, these are points on the line, Mike. I don't care. I'm already these trailing. Like, because you, these are points for like, you no, said, this, oh, this, goes, this goes active the year that, that it gets announced. So like, if they announce the cast this year, which they, I would be shocked if they did, you know, it could be a next year thing where you get bonus points. It could be two years from now. You get bonus not points. coming out for like fucking another five years, and I'm gonna probably yeah. be dead by then. So we get like, yeah, we'll we'll all be dead. Damn, but Todd's I, gonna get I will fucking put, points from the grave. Yeah, right. Dude, you better hold it. Yeah, I'm holding you. I that. keep notes. I got. Look at this. Is look at that. We got it locked in. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna throw in uh, Aegis Elba for for Ganondorf. Okay. Ooh, okay. Me. I like that. I like that. And then for Link, some young British bloke. I like it. Just for, like that. Right. Just like that. Apostrophes and all. Just some young British bloke how is mike gonna get points for that he doesn't that's fine okay if I've no one him. else gets link right and they cast some young british bloke mike you get a point <laughs> no 100 percent. no he, no he has if no if none of us get it right yeah he he has to get that if, only if they're a british it. bloke though it's it gotta be no. a young yeah, british yeah gotta be bloke. british the kid yeah i've seen young. people saying the kid from it what, what's wait, the Mike? Are you IMDb young? Are you thirty five and younger? What's young? No, the guy. I I would say younger than thirty. I I would say I'd say younger than thirty. I'd actually wow, okay. even say maybe younger than twenty five. I'll I'll give you younger than thirty because it's Hollywood, Mike. It's 30, Hollywood, thirty yeah, is twenty five, which makes us sixty. Yeah, we're old. I do think uh, that. Ganondorf not cast as like again Ganondorf cast as someone who has white skin is probably a miscast. I don't think I think Ganondorf's going to be like a a phantom. Ca- I don't think it's going to be anyone famous or anything. I I think as far as Ganondorf goes, I don't think they'll. I don't think they're worried about getting anyone in there. Well, I just I don't know who they like. Again, like it, it really depends on what the movie plot is going to be. Because like, is the movie going to be Link? What, what if the movie's Wind Waker? You know, it's like like dude, everyone they get like all these like weird like dudes with like the big eyes like me and just... <laughs> <laughs> this is Todd trying to fan cast himself as fucking Wind Waker Link. <laughs> Mike, you got a Zelda hanging in there? Uh let's go with um hmm. You know what? MBB, Millie Bobby Brown, put her down. I don't think it's right, but I just wanted to put something there. I, I think that she is a contender for that role, actually. Probably the right age. Um, have you guys, like, this is kind of... She's a popular seen... actress. I think she's... She does have an accent, too. She's British, isn't she? She's British. Yeah. She's British, yeah. There, there's been, like, this comparison of her and Wallace and Gromit, the main character from Wallace and Gromit. It's probably the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Oh, I think I did see that. I saw, like, <laughs> it was, like, her. She was, like, she's holding like, hair. She's like, <laughs> she's, like, the dirtier, the better. And then they turn to her. <laughs> okay. Oh, Dom, you got, your, you got your points here? You got your locks? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Jason Momoa's Ganondorf. Ooh, I like it. I'm gonna go with uh, 
Thomas Brody Sangster as Link. I was going to say that. Right Dom's taking this seriously. Thomas. I want to do over. No, Dom good. wants to win. Listen, Dom no. is winning right so, now this year. My Cody, and, no, my Cody Smith McPhee is like I like I was going to say what Dom said, but I'm like I got to go out of the box a little on. bit. So I'm just saying Dom is in contention right now to win the crown this year. If these casts get revealed next year, Dom oh, can go back to point. back. He's, 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 he only go only back fucking, he's only up a point right now. You, you got to you got to read you got to read that name. Hold on, Th- Thomas Brody Shalazar, Sangster. Sa- Sangster, 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 and my best guess of the three for Princess Zelda, Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> Dom's going for the picks. Wait, right now. what about Emma? Yeah. What about Emma Roberts as uh, Zelda? Or is that she going to be too? I don't. I mean, does, I she, like, act, does I, she act still? I don't know. Yes, I have no idea. Wasn't she in? Isn't she uh, still in American Horror American Story? American Horror Story. I don't fucking. Oh, know. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the wrong person. I'm thinking of the the Hermione. What, what's her name? Wait, Emma Watson. On, Emma Watson. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Dumb. I wrote Thomas Brody Sangster. That was your Zelda pick. No, that was my Link pick. Link. You said Timothy Chalamet as Zelda. <laughs> for, for okay. Zelda. <laughs> I, I, as I'm writing this, I'm like, wait a second. He guessed two links. <laughs> no, uh, no, I didn't. Okay. So we got that, yeah. And I'll just but, just for just for funsies, oh, Google, I'll, I'll Google put Google Cody Smith McPhee right now and like tell me I'm wrong. Uh, no, I don't. I'm not, <laughs> not, not going to do that. <laughs> but if they do a link to the past, who will they play? Who will play both links? Uh, Mike doesn't know Pick how that game movie. works. <laughs> I from picked the wrong game. I don't care. But the other one, or Green Time. Oh well, yeah, and that's the thing. Are they going to do a young link? And an adult link? I don't know. So I guess if, if if we're in a scenario where there's two links, you will get the point if you get one of the links right. And I will also put this stipulation on here. Each one you get right is a point. If you fucking slam dunk, get all three. I don't know. That's extra 10 points. You win for the, you win for the year. No, you don't win for the year. Extra, extra 10 points if you get all three. I think I got all three. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's on the record. It's in my phone. It's fucking locked in. Um. Okay. So we're, we're running a little late. Anyone else want to say anything about Zelda and fucking close this out? No. It's not going to be a good movie. It's so, yeah, exactly. It's it's it, it shouldn't be live action. No. That's it. I'm with Tom. I'm it's start. it's gonna be it's gonna be a thing. That's for sure. And if it and if it is live action, it shouldn't be a TV. It shouldn't be a movie. It should be a TV show. Every episode is a dungeon. I like it. Uh, With three episodes in the water dungeon. No, every every episode yeah. is no a whole season in the water dungeon, Mike. It's the writer strike that that's it's, the season. It's a hundred and fifty episode season, and they just go and get one temple from Breath of the Wild, like one of the little fucking. He has to solve the puzzle every episode. Every episode, he's solving a shrine. Yeah, shrine. Yeah. Who's gonna play fucking? Who's gonna play Hetsu? The, the fucking big Korok guy. <laughs> that would have been a good Jack Black. Damn it. Put him in there. Yeah. Um, so we have two options right now. I obviously have the game ready, ready, locked, and loaded, but we are over an hour. The other thing I was going to do was going to do another not this week point situation that would get, garner you points next month. Do we want to do both or just one of them? I don't understand. What's the second thing? So I was going to have each of you pick three categories from the Game Awards and try to correctly predict the winner of the category. And if you correctly predict the winner, you get a point. We can push that for next week because it's... Let's yeah, just we put, we'll that push that week. for next yeah, week. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll do that yeah, next yeah. week because it's that's a we still have time. I think we have like two or three weeks before that, so... I need to finish Alan Wake before I can make any fucking guesses. Okay, okay, okay. So what, I just want Baldur's Gate to be released on Xbox. Don't what, make me buy it on PlayStation. What we're going to do... For... December 1st, doesn't it? Is it December 1st? Is that quick? Oh, I hope so. The... They announced the date. I don't remember. Oh, they did? Was. Okay. The original topic for tonight that I thought we would have had fun with that I'll just we'll pocket for a future episode. So if you're listening right now... You can look forward to this episode in the future at some point. Um, I was with Scott Pilgrim show coming out today. Um, I was going to pose the question to the, to the group. Like what are some of your favorite 
things adapted to video games. Uh, so the flip side of that, because obviously Scott Pilgrim, great movie, oh. it has a good video game ad- adaptation that people people love. New, you know, Netflix show out today, so it kind of all rolled in. So we'll we'll table that conversation for a future time. Oh, that's good because I need to think about that because there's yeah. probably it's a, a good, it's a good topic. I think it's a fun topic. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot like of it. lot of stuff there to yeah. talk about, but I'm gonna keep the game from that, which is gonna be bringing back last week because I enjoyed it. Rated P for points. I'm gonna pick three games, uh, and whoever gets the closest Metacritic score and closest audience score gets the point or points. But before we... uh, Todd, oh, to revise what I said, they just announced that it would definitely be next month, and the assumption is that they'll announce it during the Game Awards. Okay, are you going to get it, Tom? Uh, probably. Because I was going to say, point? like, for our... just need... oh. because me and Brennan have talked, and we were like, I feel like we should play that co-op stream and that shit. Like, if we get some time, you know, I'm, like, cause... I'm down to I, play. I feel if, like that's going to be the way to play. It. If the four of us want to do a Baldur's Gate three campaign, I think that would be. <laughs> a really fucking fun way to play that game. We can also do two things. We, you can have multiple save files. Like we can have yeah. a group campaign that we play thing, together yeah. and then have your own campaign. That's a oh. different character that you play on your own. Um, but I'm, I am definitely down for like a yeah, weekly, fun as well. weekly or whatever, whatever works out like playing a group campaign of that. Cause I think there's a lot of fun to be had doing that. But before we hop into the game, Thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode, episode 394. We're getting so close to episode 400, which we should, barring any uh, things that pop up, we should hit 400 at the end of the year. So I'm um, working on putting together a fun episode to close the year out. That'll be episode 400. So you can look forward to that. Uh, but thank you for listening to this week's episode, episode 394. Uh, if you are a fan of the show, want to help support the show, the best ways, freest ways, easiest ways to do that is just hop on to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to the show, and leave us a quick five-star review. It's very, very beneficial. You don't have to write anything. Just go hit that five-star button. Uh, but if you want to leave a quick note, you know, I check it every week to see if there are new ones that pop up. Uh, so definitely put that in there. It helps us get noticed by other people and recommended. So please, please, please help us get a boost in that algorithm. If you have bucks kicking around and want to help support us, you can do that in a few different ways. You can, of course, subscribe to us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash passcontroller. You can be a patron at patreon.com slash passthecontroller or buy something off our shop at passthecontroller.threadless.com. Uh, if you are an audio-only listener, if we are just voices that appear in your head or your car speakers weekly on your podcast feed, uh, we are also live every week when we record the show over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash passcontroller. And we also archive that video if you can't catch the live show over on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you can search Pass the Controller or Pass the Controller Podcast on YouTube. That'll pop up. You can, of course, if you're a live viewer or a YouTube viewer, uh, if you want to listen to us on the road or on the go on a podcast feed, that exists for you as well. You can, of course, head over to passthecontroller.io and get everything that we do in one place the podcast, the streams, links to our social media, things that we write, other, you know, whatever, cocktail videos, whatever may pop up, whatever we may do is all springboarded from there. So if you're curious what else we got going on over at Past the Controller, you can definitely check that out. Uh, We appreciate you interacting with us. We appreciate you hanging out. But without further ado, let's get into why everyone's still here, which is the game. So as the leaderboard stands for the year, Dom is in first with 47. Todd creeping up at 46. Mike right below at 36. As I said, we're going to play a game called Rated P for points, which I am going to pick three games, pull up up the Metacritic scores on those games, and whoever gets the closest on both gets one to two points. Pull these tabs open here. Did you play as Batista as Marcus Phoenix before? As Batista? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, as, like, the... They apparently updated Gears 5, and now you can play as Batista. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, yeah, I remember them bringing him into the game at some point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think I ever played as him, though. All right. Game number one. As I said, the initial episode was going to be about licensed stuff so surprise all of these games are going to be licensed games 
Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Gonna take you for a ride. So be as be a be reminder, be be the Metacritic score is 1 out of 100, and the user score is 1 out of 10 with decimal points. So, Mike, what do you get for a meta score on Marvel vs. Capcom 2? New Age of Heroes. Uh, I'm going to give this one a... Let's say... Uh, 84. Okay. Audience or user or whatever, uh, 7.2. Okay, okay. Todd? Did you, did you happen to say a platform... Uh, this is specifically the Xbox 360 Xbox Live Arcade version of the game. If that changes uh, your was... opinion, Mike, you can change your score now. Mm, for a joke, let's change it to the 8 point. I said 8.2, right? Let's just it's change it to 84 a... and 7.2. Let's change it to 7.3. Okay. That either made your score better or worse, Mike. We'll find out. That's how it would normally works. Todd. Uh, I will go critic score 8.6. So user 86? score 8. You want, you want 86? 86? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, user score 8. 86.80. So the the user score is the decimal. You want 8.0? Yeah. Okay. Dumb. I'm going to do uh, critic score 8.9. <laughs> I'm going to put you as an 89. <laughs> And uh, for user score, uh, user score is so to, hard. It's I know. Well, hard. I'm also trying to read into what Brendan said about Mike moving off of the 8.2. He said it made it better or worse, which yeah, which is yeah. just what it is. It's, it makes it better. It's just what it is. It's just the numbers <laughs> change. I mean, they're doing something right or wrong. It's not going <laughs> to. The actual answer isn't moving. I'm going to say, Todd, would you say 8.0? Yes. I'm going to say 8. I'm going to go with a user score of an 84. So an 8.4. Well, Mike is the closest on the meta score with an 84. It was an 82. And Dom is the closest on the user score. It is an 8.3. So that's a point apiece for the two of them. And the lead gets larger again. Did like Metacritic has Metacritic been around that long or did it's like update their like stuff to like old games? Uh I mean Metacritic was I'm probably definitely around during the three sixty era. I mean this game, okay. this game is older. That's why I didn't pull up like the Dreamcast version, because I don't yeah, know if that's yeah, yeah. on here, but they also compiled old reviews, didn't they? First games? I don't know. I'm always curious about that. All I'm going to take right. you for a ride. Bum, bum. Ba -da 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 -da. Let me just pull this up real quick. Make sure I have the right platform here for this one. All right. We are going to now go down the road of Spider-Man 2 for the Xbox. Was that exclusive to Xbox or no? No, I believe it was also on at least PlayStation. I don't know if it was on GameCube. It may have. Oh, been. Xbox, Xbox. Yes, oh, yeah, yes. But, yeah, okay. This yeah. was the one. This was the this one is from for... 2004 for the Tobey yeah. Maguire oh, the... tie-in. Yes, yeah. So Spider-Man Two, as in the game of Based off the Spider -Man Spider -Man the... Yes. Fun fact about this game: I didn't know that this game was almost the game that started the free flow combat that we see in Arkham. Hmm. Like if you want, like I, I never knew that. Like it's, it didn't have the same kind of combat, but it, like it was pretty much like where everything shifted from there. But did people like it? I don't know. No more I just know. saw, I saw a video on this recently about like how the combat was like where kind of like Arkham kind of got some inspiration from. Well, Todd, what do you think of this Activision developed Spider-Man game? Oof, this is a tough one. I don't think it's in the nines, so... Uh, it's just kind of figuring out where I'm placing it in the eights. If it's there. Uh, I'm going to go 8.8. .8. Um, Are you? Is that your Metacritic? Yes. So you want an 88? 
an 8.8. .8. Okay. Uh, and then for user, I'm going to go 83. Okay. That's all you need. 8.3, .3, sorry. 8.3. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess with the decimal points, they're both 100-point scale, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, dumb. I get an 88 and an 8.3. I can't. I keep picturing a screenshot in my head, and also I can't remember if it's 3. from I can't. I don't know if I'm thinking of Spider-Man Three, but Spider-Man. No, that was in the Xbox. Is though. this the one with the quick time events? You could fuck up, and then like if it that explodes. The one that I keep picturing in my head. I I'm gonna go ahead and give this oh, fuck. a six point two. <laughs> going in the I'm middle. Going in this. the middle is tough. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go sixty and six point five. I'm probably way off on. I'm probably. Miscalculating. That's 60 fine. and 6.5. Mike, where are you landing? Now I have to fucking... You have to play smart. Just pick something in the 70s. All yeah, right. I mean, that's the way to go. Or are one of I'm them gonna... close, Mike, and you need to play a little close to them? I don't know, which is why I'm going to pick my thing and split the difference. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to say... the. Uh, 74 okay and 7.9 7.9 and the results are in Todd almost stole it if Todd uh, had put his uh, I guess it wouldn't matter either way I thought if you reversed him it would have stole it but he did not uh, so Todd is the closest with his meta score, it was an 83. Todd said 88, and he was so close on the user score, it was an 8.0. Mike is closest with 7.9. So, Mike, wait, what did I say for user score? I didn't say 8.0. 8.3. 8. Damn it! <laughs> so Mike gets bumped up to fuck. So that must have been the game I was thinking of then. Uh, 38, I think. 39. I fucking just deleted it and didn't look. Can I there's a hundred there's a hundred in here for a critic review and it says i can't fathom going back and and having to drive a car in the next grand theft auto <laughs> um did you guys ever play the path of neo the game for like i definitely played it at some point dude that game was like good. it was legit like the craziest game it, it made it made you feel like you were neo uh <laughs> but no like that game was so good and it reminded me of like fucking where we've come to these days. Okay, that will put that us game, at the, the third game. What was I gonna pick? Where, where did it just go? All right, it's episode one pod racer, and we know it's gonna be a <laughs> hundred and ten across the board. Like that's just it's a perfect game. Game number three. Why is it playing these ads? Is the 2005 film turned game The Warriors? Rockstar, baby. For the Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. I don't know if I got a GameCube port, but it's that generation. Those those three. Dom, you're up first. Um, I haven't watched The Warriors in a long time. Is it still a good movie? I feel like it still holds up, yeah, right? It's, yeah, it's still a good movie. Yeah, definitely. It's a classic. Like. Who, like the person that directed that or wrote that, well known or no? Like they still make movies no, or no? I, I honestly don't know. Like I don't. I forget who directed it. To be honest with you. I'm going to go Direct, Rockstar. Director I'm going to go Walter Hill. I don't know. Uh, he did. Yeah, I think he did um, the movie with Paul Newman and uh, Tom Hanks, Road to Perdition. I Let's could see. be wrong. Uh, known for, according to IMDb, 48 Hours, was a writer, producer on Aliens, producer on Alien 3, and writer of Streets of Fire. Okay. It's a Rockstar game. I'm going to go 
That's so uh, off the beaten path for Rockstar, though. Just remember, I know. that's not something that, like, people don't even know that's a Rockstar game, I feel like. I'm going to go 80... I am going to go 80... Game, so I'm going to go 82... And... I don't know. 7.7. 7. Okay. Oh, you're close to what I was going Michael. Mm. Come out and play, yay. Yeah, I'm familiar with the movie. I kind of remember the game coming out, but I don't... I never played it. Talk, I don't remember people talking about it, so I don't know if it was like... I wish I did play it, though, because I do remember... Pe- I feel like people still say good things about it to this day. Um, Todd's throwing me for a loop. I'm going to give it a high score, and Todd's going to come and like, yeah, that game was ass! Like, 30 was 48! <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so I'm going to say 69. Nice. And Christ. I'm going to say um, se- mm, yeah, uh, 7.5. Okay. Todd, take us home. Uh, what did Dom say for his, not his Metacritic, because I was going to say one above Dom for the user. 82.77. 80, okay. So, eighty-five seventy-eight. We got a fucking barn burner, boys. Todd is on the fucking money on Metacritic with an eighty-five. So Todd gets a cool point for that, but a miscalculation on his user score, which brings us worse. brings us into a predicament. The user score is a seven point six. Dom said 7-7, seven, seven, and Mike said 7-5. So, do we both get points? Do we do a fourth game? You, you, you got to guess what you got to guess what year the movie was actually fucking made, and whoever's close to win. <laughs> Is that what you want to do? You want to have a tiebreaker? <laughs> I mean, I'm not involved in this because, like, I'm not. A, oh, you know, no, you know, no, you know what? No, there is a, there is actually a fair way to do this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, right now. I feel like I need to play this game, or I want them to remake it, because I've heard nothing but good things about this game. I can see the reflection on Brian's screen. He's just looking up Hulk and Beast kissing. <laughs> the fair way to do this is, what is the Rotten Tomato score of the Warriors? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Hmm. Spoiler alert. Actually, no, we'll do it this way. You can pick... If you want to guess the tomato score or the audience score, you only are guessing one. So you can pick which one you want to pick. Mike, since you are, the guess on this, right? since you are in last place on the scoreboard, Mike, I will give yeah. you the, would you like to go first or second here? I will go second, but I'm, I'm sure like we don't have to pick the same, like Dom could do audience and I could do the other one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or we're both going to be doing the same. No, right. you can yeah, pick whatever. Like I, yeah, I, I probably won't do the same thing Dom's going to pick anyway, because it's not... I'm going to do the tomato meter. Okay. And I'm going to and I'm gonna guess 79. 79? Okay. Mike? Yes. Are you going tomato or audience? I'm going to go audience. Okay, okay. I'm going to say 85. That's a smart pick, Mike. Well. The real rub... <laughs> Is that the tomato score and the audience score are the same fucking number? So we could oh, have really? just ran into a scenario where you both oh. tied again, and I was again. like, I kind of like that. Let's let's see if it happens again. Would have been funny. But Mike is closest and gets the point at a at a double tomato audience score of eighty eight. Mike said eighty five. So what did Dom say? Uh, Seventy nine. Okay, I feel like that's like could it, it's like yeah, it's so the old movies are so hard to gauge. Because yeah. they like update the to- they update the to- like people will review that movie like from and then a few it gets years ago and added it. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's so hard to the and I'm looking at it now. I the tomato the tomato meter ha- only has fifty reviews. Yeah, that's and nothing. the audience but has like, fifty thousand plus. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that ends the week in. There's there's fifty reviews and one is from like three weeks ago. <laughs> what does it say? Let's check it out. Ten out of ten. I mean, are they wrong? Uh, 
Oh, wow. Roger Ebert gave it a two out of four. Uh, a stinker. No matter what impression the ads give, this isn't even remotely intended as an action film. It's a set piece. It's a ballet of stylized male violence. I love. He Roger just didn't Ebert, like the he, fucking he's so baseball furies. Yeah, I feel so, like yeah. it. He's I don't know. I feel like it's like. It's like fun, but it's like not a good movie. Yeah. No, I agree. I get that. Yeah. That's why I was like, it's probably like, I don't know. It's a cult movie. It's a, it has yeah. a huge yeah. cult yeah. ball. It's yeah. a Donnie Darko, basically. It's, it's definitely know, like, one of my dad's favorite why, movies. My dad loves this That's movie. why I was afraid to give it out of the 70s. Yeah. Because I, I was like, I wouldn't have gone it's out a cult of the 70s. movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. That puts us in an inter- interesting end of the week. I'd have to scroll back. I don't know how far or when or how to even pinpoint it without just clicking on every episode, but we are at a tie. It wasn't tied last week, right? I don't think it was. I don't know. It was down one last week. Uh, Dom and Todd are tied at 48. Mike creeping up at 39. That'll do it for this week's episode, though. Episode 394. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next time.